thanks for the support as a channel member, Tira McDonough. No, we we didn't we didn't finish second. We finished second in the in the loser group, in the relegation group. No, I know the league table shows us in second place, but in reality we finished eighth. No, I don't No, I don't think we can have a title challenge next year because we've got no money. The budgets are no higher than they were last year, and I emphasize again, we were in the loser group. I'll try and win the cup. Hello and welcome to part 15 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special, similar to last summer. I don't know how much there's going to be in the way of transfers because we don't have any money to spend once again. So we'll review the season, then work out who's leaving and who's retiring and then see if we've got any money left to plug any gaps with loans and free transfers. That's basically what a transfer window is going to be like here at Apollon, until, I guess until we're in Europe, because that's the only way we're going to start getting any kind of money flowing, I think. So if you did miss the last couple of episodes, we finished second. Hooray! If you're actually aware of what's going on, obviously we finished second in the, in the loser group. Uh, which was topped by OFI. Uh, we actually ended up... We, we, we finished seventh in the regular league. I assume when they show the overall league table, though, they'll actually show us in eighth, just having played fewer games than the teams in that group who they have to play They have to play 10 games. We only had to play seven. So our season is finished. Theirs is still going on. In fact, there's, there's teams below us whose season is still ongoing. So in actual fact, we've not necessarily finished second. We could theoretically, I mean, we could still theoretically finish as low as fourth in that group, but it would involve a huge goal swing and a win for Zanti. So we're going to call it finishing second because we've got the season review stuff in. So that means the season is over. So this is our overall best 11. Should have a very familiar look to it at the moment, 22 seasons in. So it's basically our current team. Even Del Favreau is in there as our all-time best goalkeeper, um, having only played 16 games for us and conceded 24 goals. But he's better than any other goalkeeper we've had in the two years we've been here so far. A back four of Giannoutsos, Papazoglu, Zizopoulos and Balakis. Balakis is a little bit of an odd one. Um, I guess he had quite a good season for us last year. And I, I imagine that's more to do with the fact that we changed right backs partway through the season this year. Um, and Kalapitas came in halfway through the year. So I imagine he'll push him to this team next year if he continues to play. A midfield of Halilaj, Andrutsos and Blazic. How I miss Marco Blazic. What's he up to these days? How has he managed to go from that to that? Where's his goals gone? ridiculous um, and then on the wing Bumel, Nacho and then Nikos up front can't argue with any of that really Nikos was fantastic for us not quite so fantastic for Kaiser Slauten. is he out of contract this summer he's not he's got one more year left there so I think that's quite a decent mix of our first two seasons team so far can't really argue with too much of that and also can't argue with this Bumel was player of the year narrowly followed up by Nacho I think it's very clear Bumal was definitely player of the first half of the year. Nacho, very much player of the second half of the season. And that's reflected in those votes. Andriopoulos, a little bit further back in third place. Nacho got goal of the season as well. Let's have a little look at this. to see. I mean, we I criticised his finishing quite a lot, but he did score quite a lot of goals for us as well. So I imagine if his finishing was a little bit better than, than it clearly is, he would be playing for a much better team than us. As it is, we know every now and again he'll do something like that and get himself a goal of the season and run off and do the chicken dance. Bumal gets signing of the season on a free transfer. Andrutsos, young player of the year. He was on loan with us from Olympiakos and is now joining permanently this summer. So good to see him getting the young player of the year award. Team of the season, Del Favreau in goal. Back for of Giannoutsos, Lawson, 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 Papadopoulos, Kalapitas. So Kalapitas and Lawson do make it into the team of the year. So expect them to be in the all-time best 11 this time next year if they're both still at the club. Halilaj behind Andriopoulos and Andrutsos. Um, and then Bumal and Nacho supporting Santa Maria. I don't think anyone argues with any of that. That all looks spot on to me. Bumal finishing top goal scorer on 16 goals. Nacho very close behind, ending up on 14 goals. And Santa Maria on 11 goals. So there was a decent share of goals in our front three. They just were never all scoring at the same time. Early on it was Bumal, Santa Maria until he got injured. Then Nacho was our goal scorer towards the end of the season. 
Most uh, highest average rating also goes to Bumal. Most assists is shared between Calapitas and Nacho. So clearly, a lot of our goals coming from this right hand side, probably reflecting the fact that most of Bumal's goals were from crosses coming in from this side that he was then tucking away. Um, Del Favreau, best pass completion. Big up the midfield if our goalkeeper is the best passer. And Bumal, most man of the matches award. Lawson and Giannoutsos, kings of the Naughty Boys Club with Petralis picking up the one red card of the season. We overperformed against the pre-season expectation. We were supposed to battle bravely against relegation and ended up finishing runners, uh, not runners up, ended, <laughs> it says runners up. Um, we weren't runners up. This is so broken. We ended up finishing securely in mid-table and very nearly made it into that championship group. And also the Greek Cup uh, quarterfinal was a good little run there as well. The board are very disappointed with Club Vision pro progress because I haven't grown the club's reputation. What more am I supposed to have done? I got us promoted. We've had cup run each year. We've finished higher in the league than we were supposed to. What? What on earth could I have done more to grow the reputation in that time? Absurd, Mrs. Wearmouth. Absurd. Club Vision expectations now. So uh, work within the wage budget. Easy. Best youth system in the country. Only if it's financed. I can I can keep playing the players, but if you're not going to finance the youth set up, develop the best youth system in the world within five years. How? There's no money. Minimum two-year contracts for first-team players is fine too. I want us to avoid relegation again in this coming year. Um, by the end of next, so in two seasons' time, grow the club's reputation and become an established Super League team. So I guess... I mean, surely we're going to grow the reputation in two years. I'd like to think within two years, we're, we're certainly pushing for a, a Europa League spot, maybe. And then just over the course of five years, establish ourselves as a Super League team, which I think is fair enough. Our team leaders are Zizopoulos and Pabazoglu. Zizopoulos has already announced his retirement. He retires in a couple of weeks' time. Pabazoglu will probably be moving on. He's out of contract, I think. Why can't I click on him there? We'll have another opportunity to click on him at some point, I'm sure. But I think he's out of contract, so we might be losing both of our team leaders and focusing in even more on youth. Right, going into next season, we're in a good position to avoid relegation. I think that's a good, a good motivational thing to say. They're happy with that. End of season break is all good. Pre-season training camp, we can go to Central Greece. Thessaly, also in Greece. Central Macedonia. Macedonia's in Greece? I need a map. I really need a map. I don't know. I guess we'll just we'll just do Central Greece. We don't need to spend loads of money. We'll just hang around in Central Greece. We don't need to go away. We've got no. We're absolutely skim. So let's just let's just enjoy ourselves where we are. As you can see, we definitely need to move some players on before we can look to bring anybody in. Um, but that is our season. I'm still passionate. Of course, I'm still passionate. Am I truly happy with the direction the club wants to go in? Yeah, I'm happy. Why are you trying to put a divide between me and Mrs. Wearmouth? What is this? Oh, we have got budgets. Uh, what? We'll get to we'll get to that in a minute. So we actually have had an increased budget. So that we have got a little bit of flexibility to play with. Thank you, Mrs. Wearmouth. I might not be thanking you about this. Because what's wrong with our ground? Our current ground is a 15,000 all-seater that we never come close to being to filling. It was rebuilt less than 20 years ago. I guess, average condition. It could do and basic corporate facilities. It would be nice to upgrade that stuff. This isn't ideal. The future stadium is planned to be a 7,700 capacity. Why on earth would we want to spend all that money building a new ground only to half the capacity when we're supposed to be a club on the rise? That is nuts. The main reason behind the decision was that the Elathra Taxia current ground... Is that what we're... That's... That must be light brigade in Greek, I guess. Current ground, Georgios Kamaras is an old venue with high maintenance costs. Okay, fair enough. High maintenance costs. It's not that old, though. Less than 20 years ago it was rebuilt. And the board felt it would be more beneficial to build a brand new stadium. The board have, however, pointed out this will not be a smooth process as it will take some time before any plans can be finalised and put into action. Owner Mrs. Wearmouth really wants to take the club to the next level and considers building a new stadium to be a big step in that direction. I mean, fair enough, Mrs. Wearmouth. But... I do have to question, unless it's got a big expansion capacity, I have to question the logic behind building a new ground that might not even be big enough for us to play in the Champions League. What are the rules of the Champions League? You need an 8,000 minimum seating capacity to play in the Champions League. So as it stands, if we build that ground as is, 
we won't be able to use it in the Champions League. Grounds have been my nemesis on Football Manager this year. I've had issues like this in my Twitch save, which, by the way, stream four nights a week on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Uh, link is down in the description for that. You can see we've had similar issues there with home. We've had ground nonsense with Bourne as well in that series. The whole stadium, the way stadiums work, needs an overhaul for FM21, I think, just to add some better logic to it. I guess we're now just in a race against time to qualify for the Champions League before we get out of the searching for a site stage, before we've committed to anything, let's make it clear that we need a bigger stadium. That means fast-forwarding the process a little bit. My, uh, my director of football has just signed me a new under-19s assistant manager. And I can't help but think, little bit of gimmick infringement going on there. Be calling himself Kingy two times in a minute. Right, we've made it through to the 30th of June, contract expiry day. A few a few players who were in and around the first team squad making their way out of the club. Athanasiadis has gone, Jovanovic has gone, Menendez has gone. And we've got some more, these are the contracts that are due for next summer, which I'm not in any rush to really extend any of these yet, because it's not any of the youngsters. Um, we've only just extended his, his was up this summer. Yeah, I'm happy to leave them as they are for now my director of football will take care of them these are our lone players who've come back so he's probably the one who is most interesting because he's got the five star potential not quite ready to burst into the team on either side really especially we've got Giannoutsos coming back as our left back he signs permanently tomorrow um, but this is what the squad depth currently looks like if we have this filtered as it got if we include future transfers in why does that Oh, no, that hides players with future transfers in. So let's get rid of the ones whose... Oh, does that include players who are expiring next season? We don't want that. Right, so these are the three-star players or more, who, including the ones who are coming in. So Andrutsos um, and Giannoutsos coming in as well. So you can see we've got Lewis and Santa Maria as strikers. I don't think we need to strengthen there. Right-hand side, Nacho, Armanakis, Bumal can play there, but realistically, Bumal's our left-wing option. And I think we do need to bring someone in over the top of Bumal. He went, out, he went off the boil a little bit towards the end of last season. He's 31 now. Let's try and bring someone in of a similar quality to everyone else in the attack. We want a four-star player out there. We need someone as backup for Andrutsos if we're going to be using this 4-2-3-1 system, which I, I think we are. I think it plays to our huge strength in depth that we've got at defensive midfield. We've got five players three-star current ability or above who can play as defensive midfielders. Halilaj, Andriopoulos, Labru, Petralis, who is a central midfielder, but he's comfortable playing back there. And even Andrutsos can play back there. Not that he ever will, but we probably need another player. Ideally, we'd bring in someone who can play there and central midfield, so we've got the flexibility to move between the two systems. And then at the back, huge strength in depth at centre-back. Kios, Lawson, they'll be our starting partnership, both 18. That's ridiculous. Kalapitas can obviously play there too, but he's kind of our right-back, but also our best left-back as well, although Giannoutsos comes in. Rentsas had a, a contract extension triggered by us not getting relegated, so we're kind of stuck with him for another year, which isn't a disaster. Um, and then backups at the back, we've still got Papazoglu. Um, we've also got Thales Syriakos, who's another one of our youngsters who's never played a game for us, but has emerged with three-star current ability, still has five-star potential. So he's uh, he's in and around the place as well. And then obviously Del Favreau in goal. So we don't have a huge amount of money to spend. There's a spare four, five thousand pounds a week in the wage budget. I think based on how much some of the better players earn, like Santa Maria's on four grand just on his own, Nacho probably even more than that. I think we're, we're probably looking at maybe one or two players to fill these gaps and that's it. It's It might go down in history as my quietest summer ever as we really focus in on this youth development stuff. I mean, if we look through this squad at players who've come from our own youth team, there's Kalapitas, Kios, Lawson, Syracos, Halilaj, Labru, uh, Luris, Armanaka. Oh, in fact, Armanakas, I think, didn't, did he? he? No, he signed before I got here, though. So we've probably got, what's that, six, seven, eight players already in our first team squad two years in who came through our youth setup. Long may it continue. Hello, Chelsea. I mean, if they want to give us five and a half million pounds for him, you can have him because we could really, really use five and a half million pounds. And as we've just seen, we've got the strength in depth to be able to cope without him. He's not even our best young centre-back. Chelsea, come and get him. Give us the money.
That would be amazing. What a difference that makes to the summer if we get that amount of money come in. We've got, we'd get a quarter of that to go and spend, which would be more money to spend than any Greek Super League team has had in either of these first two years. We could buy our way into the Champions League with that kind of thing. Come on, Chelsea. Well, a couple of weeks have passed and uh, we're pretty much done unless Ryan Lawson leaves. Because we've spent the money we had. I think we've improved the squad. There's a, We sold Alberto Gonzalez for £30,000, which I think is a fantastic amount of money to get for him. Bear in mind, we only got 25000 for Choo Choo and a similarly low amount for... How much did we get for Larea? 100000 for Larea to get 30000 for our third-choice goalkeeper. It is awesome. And he is our third-choice goalkeeper because we've signed Alberto Brinoli, 29-year-old Italian, four-star current ability goalkeeper. Yes, we're paying him almost all of the spare transfer budget we had, but he is a very, very, very good goalkeeper. Much better than Del Favreau. He's previously of Juventus, amongst other clubs. Never actually played a game for Juventus, but still... Previously of Juventus, Juventus saw fit only six years ago to pay one and a half million pounds for him. He's still only 29, so there's lots more lots more time in him yet. We've got a proper goalkeeper. That's a goalkeeper we're not going to need to replace anytime soon. Certainly, I don't imagine we'll ever go out and sign a replacement because by the time he's ready to be replaced, Todd Thomas will probably be there to replace him. Who wants him? They can back up. Oh, it's a loan. That's all right then. That's all right then. And we've also signed a couple more youngsters. Luka Simic is a 19-year-old Serbian. He can play as an attacking midfielder or a striker, so offers us, offers us a little bit of cover in both of those positions. Three-star current ability, five-star potential. So he's not a starter in either role, but with a huge amount of potential. He's formerly of Inter. So we're, we're just picking up... You can't you tell Italy and Spain are the two major leagues that I've got loaded because all our players are coming from Italy or Spain. Uh, Georgios Zaidas is a 24-year-old Greek winger, can play on either side. Um, he's mainly a right winger, but I think he could do a cracking job as an inside forward on this right-hand side, on this left-hand side, sorry, which is what we've brought him in to do. He won't get past Nacho on that side. I suspect he will get past Bumal on this side. He was previously of Giannina, um, who have been a team we've come up against quite a few times over the first couple of seasons of this save. You can see he's in the goals, good for assists, one of the standout players of the league below in the recent years, still only 24 and available on a free transfer. And then we went out and spent some money. Tassos Guras is a 19-year-old right back, complete wing back, so definitely my kind of wing back, different kind of fullback from what we've got with Kalapitas. Only two-star current ability at the moment, so not going to go straight into the team. Team, but another one with huge potential and potential to play in the kind of right back role that you know I like to have so that means it's all gone in fact let's just adjust this I don't know why the budget's balanced out like that that's not right so we're way over budget we can't bring anyone else in I don't know if my director of football will be interested in bringing me any loans but I don't necessarily think we need any loans because I think we're probably okay if we take squad depth down to two star yeah, and do that. You can see we've got four, well, three striker options. Andrutsos, not really. Just similar to how Andrutsos isn't going to play as a defensive midfielder. He's not going to play striker either. But three good options of striker, including Simic. Plenty of depth on either wing. Simic can be our backup attacking midfielder. We've still got Kiotis as well, who scored that great goal towards the end of last season. Loads of depths at depth at centre at defensive midfield. Kalapitas provides cover across the entire back four. We've then got Giannoutsos. Rentas is still here. We'd like to get rid of him, um, but he is still here at the moment. Kalapitas likely to start as our as our right back, though. And then if Lawson stays, we've got Lawson, Kios, Kalapitas, Pabazoglu is still here. Um, Syracos is the one we looked at earlier in the summer. And then Brinoli, Del Favro, Thomas as goalkeepers. That, to me, is a finished squad. The only way it will need to do any more is if my director of football finds me some loans or Ryan Lawson goes and we suddenly have money to spend. But we might be better off investing that in the youth academy rather than spending it on players anyway, if that happens. The media think we're going to finish 11th. Obviously, we don't have anyone in the dream 11. If we have a look who the media think our best... But Brinoli's not a million... You don't have to scroll very far to get Brinoli. He must be one of the best goalkeepers in the division. He can't be a million miles away from that guy who's... Where is this Sa who's in goal? If this is supposedly in order, Jose Sa, why is... I guess he's not one of the top two players for his club, actually. That'll be why that is. Brunoli is our best player. And then Andrutsos also above the fold, above the halfway point. So we've got a few standout players. Brunoli is the main man. Syracuse is our hottest prospect at a club that's got Ryan Lawson in it. 
and we've got some other youngsters who are developing nicely as well. So, and um, particularly Thomas and Mark Tracy, who's yet another centre back off the conveyor belt, eighteen years old. His his attributes flying up at the moment. I mean, there's a very strong argument that we actually need to sell Mark Lawson because he's in the way of Kios and Syracos and Tracy and I guess not that guy. Maybe that, I mean he's four and a half star potential. We've got so many good centre backs coming through. The best thing to happen for the club now is a big offer for Ryan Lawson. So we wait. Well, I promised you a quiet summer. And that's exactly what we've had. We signed one more player. Nikos Rutizeres. A new, new Nikos. Hold on. I can't say his uh, name. So, new. Don't know why Caps Lock was on. Kind of monster sits there. Recording videos with Caps Lock on. But new Nikos is in. We've sold some of the fringe players. Varkas. Pabazoglu, who was probably going to be our fourth choice centre back this season and was on a lot of money. Our fourth choice goalkeeper, Rentas, we managed to get rid of for free, which freed up a thousand pounds a week. We're still way over our wage budget because we've gone and extended contracts for all of the youth players. Basically, anybody who's got five star potential has had a contract extension, apart from Ryan Lawson, who won't sign one and is currently still here. So. The window's not closed yet, and there's a lot of big clubs in for him. But as of now, he will be starting the season tomorrow, um, and we play Olympiacos first up. So that's a bit of a test to kick things off, off for us and see how this very, very young squad can get on. If you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.